Hi, I'm Pat from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore, and today I'm going to show you how to use your brand new Baby Lock Verve sewing and embroidery machine. In this video, I'm going to go over the accessories included with this machine, the sewing and embroidery features of this machine, and other important points to get you sewing and embroidering on your machine in no time. So let's get started. Now, first of all, we're going to go over the included accessories that come with the Baby Lock Verve. This is a wonderful extension table, and who doesn't want an extension table for their machine? When you turn it over, you can see that it has a little feet that you would snap up, four little feet, and you can slide it on your machine when your embroidery unit is not on. Why would you want an extension table? I think a lot of you have extension tables with your machine and maybe don't use them. This helps if you're a quilter or if you're sewing on a heavy project, an extension table always helps to support the weight of your project so that it's not falling off and fighting you. So I would recommend that when you're in sewing mode, unless you're sewing something really small or uh, doing a small project, I would recommend using your extension table more so than not. So let's move on. Over here, we have the accessory or little storage compartment. So this slides on to your machine very easily. And I'll show you that in a minute. It slides on and basically you can store whatever you like in here. You can put your extra feet. Um, as you can see, it opens up. So that's storage for when you are in sewing mode. Okay, we have are three manuals, so to speak. So let's just touch on these a second. Your quick reference guide is exactly what it's called. It's a quick reference guide. If you want to look at what stitch patterns are in there or how to select a stitch pattern, it's a very basic guide to your machine. You also have an embroidery and design guide. Um, this to me is quite valuable because you can spend hours and honestly they're pleasurable hours looking through your um, designs in your machine but you can also look at this book and it'll tell you these are all the designs that are built in so you may find designs in here that you don't even know you have in your machine so I would definitely recommend that you use this. It also tells you how long it'll take to stitch a design out and your color stitch out. So this is very valuable, so definitely take a look at this in the front or all your fonts. And I also want to bring to light that in the back of this handy manual or reference guide, it has a color thread conversion chart. And we often get asked when I'm in the machine department, if I have this brand of thread, what is the conversion to another brand of thread? So right here in your fingertips, and I think a lot of you may have this and don't know you have it, you have the information here in the back of your embroidery design guide. Third, you have the most important one, which is your instruction and reference guide. So this goes through your machine step by step. So even if you look at page 36, here's all your stitches that are built into this machine. This Verve Baby Lock sewing and embroidery machine is jam-packed with value for the size. It's just a great, great machine. So it's got quilting stitches, heirloom stitches. It does a one-step buttonholer. So definitely refer to this when you need to. The other thing is, at the front of it, you will find a list of what accessories are included with your machine. And if you turn the page, you find the, the accessories that are optional to your machine. And we're gonna go over that in a second. I'm gonna keep going here. Okay, so then we have our four by four embroidery hoop. So this is a small um, field for a machine, but remember this is an entry level sewing and embroidery machine. It's great for travel. It's great for maybe embroidering with your granddaughter. So it's a great, starter machine if you want to test test drive an embroidery machine. So it has a four by four inch embroidery field and it also brings the hoop grid which helps you with positioning. Okay, let's keep going here. It comes with bobbin, finishing touch bobbin thread 60 weight. 
So for your bobbin thread, these machines are calibrated to certain weights. So it's good to use 60 weight bobbin thread on the bottom. Let's see if we can get it here. Um, 60 weight on the bottom and on the top, when you're embroidering, we're talking embroidering, you're gonna use 40 weight. And remember that when you're talking thread, the higher the number, the finer the thread. So your bobbin thread is 60 weight. It comes also with a little pair of scissors, a net for when you're embroidering with tricky thread that tends to maybe slide off your roll. So if you're having issues in embroidery with your um, thread, you can use your net over your spool and basically you would do it like this. You would just cover it and then feed your thread off and it helps to grip your thread. Actually, I'm gonna pull it through and show you. I would have my thread going this way. So you can see now that my thread pulls off really nice and it does not allow it to slide down or to cause me trouble. So handy, nets are very handy to use for certain threads. Okay, we also have two bobbin covers here. I took the one off the machine. So one of these, when you open your machine, this one with the markings comes on your machine and then you've got an extra one. So what's the difference? This one has the markings for quarter inch or for when you're in sewing mode. So again, very valuable. Everything that this machine brings has value to it. So certainly look at what you got. Okay, I have an extra pack of needles. I have um, embroidery and sewing needles. I have two spool caps. Remember that with spool caps, you always want to, um, when selecting your thread, if you're gonna put a spool cap on it, you want your spool cap to be slightly larger than your spool. It helps to hold your spool on your um, spool holder, but it also helps when your thread feeds off around, that it's feeding off a very smooth edge. So don't use a large spool cap on a small spool of thread. Use the right size of spool cap. So for instance, my small spool cap, I would never use on this. I would use it on a smaller spool of thread. Okay, and then we have this little item here. So most everybody never knows what to do with this, and this plays a big role in embroidery. I know that um, embroidering with cones of thread is very popular. So I have a Floriani cone of thread in my hand. And basically when you go to put this cone of thread on your machine, on your spool cap, you're gonna run it horizontally. And you're not gonna use one of these. You're not gonna use a regular spool cap. You are gonna use this. So this slides in here and then it'll hold it on your spool holder. So please, please use this. It helps to have um, very even tension and it also prevents your thread from bouncing up and down on your horizontal spool holder so you will be more successful in the long run. Okay, let's move on here. Next, we have an eyelet punch here and then we have a screwdriver. We have a... Um, uh, seam ripper, I almost forgot what it was called. So you have a little seam ripper, which is handy. We have a little brush to keep your machine, your bobbin case clean. We have a twin needle, four bobbins come with the machine, four, and the machine uses class 15 bobbins. So four bobbins. Then we have an extra spool holder on the top of your machine, and when we get to the machine, I'm gonna show you. So if you were sewing with a twin needle and you needed an extra spool holder, there's actually a little space by the handle of the machine, a little hole where you could slide this in and add your extra. And I will show you in a minute when I sit in front of the machine. Okay, now we have another little disc screwdriver Moving along, we have a handy little pouch for you to keep your feet in. And now let's get into the feet. So the machine comes with obviously an embroidery foot. I have the embroidery foot on the machine. 
This, what I have in my hand, is the shank for sewing, and then I have the J presser foot. So this is my general presser foot. And you'll notice when you look at, when you look closely at the feet that come with your machine, that each, one, each foot has a little letter in there. That indicates the, the um, type of foot. So if you reference it, um, look for the letter on the, on the foot right underneath here. So if I wanted to detach my presser foot when I have it on the machine, I wanted to detach it from the shank. There's a little black lever on the back. All I would do is press it. All I would do is press this little lever on the back and my foot drops off and I'm left with my shank. So when I want to go to sewing, I would remove my embroidery foot off the machine, put my shank on, and then this just snaps right on. Super easy. So, so what is the difference? The next foot I want to talk about is the end foot. And Brother calls this their monogramming foot. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the J foot. But what is the difference? The difference is if you're stitching decorative stitching or something that is more like a satin stitch, this foot is wider, so it, it, the bite is better so to speak. And also, if you look at the bottom of the foot and you compare the two feet, this one is grooved out. I'm going to set it down here so you can see. So this is my N foot or my monogramming foot, and it is grooved out. I think you can see that on the camera. So why is it grooved out? So that it does, when I, as I sew my decorative stitching, it rides over and does not drag my decorative stitching. This one you can see is flat, completely flat on the bottom. Okay, let's move on here. This is my button. So this machine has a setting, has a stitch where you can sew buttons on. There's also an, the G foot is your overcasting foot. Then we have, of course, the zipper foot. And then this last one is your blind stitch foot. So if you like to hem with your machine, there are certainly um, blind stitch stitches built into the machine, and this is your blind stitch foot. And then last but not least is your buttonhole foot. The Baby Lock Verve does a one-step buttonhole, which is really, really nice. If you're a garment maker, it's just much easier to get consistent buttonholes with this foot. And the nice thing about it when I say it's a one step is that you would actually, let's pretend this is a button. When you put, attach this foot onto your machine and you select the buttonhole that you want the machine to stitch out, you could see how that grows. I could put my button in the back here and I could just close this and it grips my button, pretend this is a button, and it'll read the length and it'll do the appropriate buttonhole stitch length in one step. Most machines, entry level machines, it's a four step. This is a one step buttonholer. Okay, let's, uh, so of course it comes with a foot control for when you're sewing, your power cord, and there's another couple of things I want to show you. It um, comes, this is really, really nice. It comes with a nice cover, a hard shell cover. And this is very nice, of course, to keep, to keep your machine clean and keep your dust off. But this is also a great secondary machine. If you're um, a guild member or you travel back and forth a lot and you don't want to carry your really heavy machine. You just need a small lightweight machine that pretty much does a lot of stuff and has a, need a needle threader and a thread cutter. Um, you can use your nice case to protect it while it's traveling in your car. So super nice. And of course it has the handle and you would just slide this over and you're ready to travel. Now let's go over another couple of things. In the machine department, we get asked a lot, oh, I just bought a new machine. What kind of bobbins should I use or what needles do I need? So I'm going to go ahead and give you that information now while I'm instructing you 
on your new baby lock verb. So we sell pre-wound embroidery bobbins. These are very popular. They're by Filtech. Clear Glide, you see it says class 15. That's the, that's the size of bobbin that you need to use on your machine. And they're pre-wound with the right weight of thread for embroideries. And yes, they do last a long time. So it's just, once you're embroidering, it's super nice when you run out of bobbin thread to just grab a pre-wound. What else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about needles. Um, because of course we have all, there are all kinds of needles out there on the market, but there are some that are very valuable. If you're an embroiderer, you want to use embroidery needles. So these are Schmetz embroidery needles. We carry 70, size 7511. We carry size 9014. Um, these are what you need for embroidery. Any Schmetz needle pretty much will fit this machine. So if you're in sewing mode and you need needles, you could use the Schmetz Universal, but again, you can pretty much use any Schmetz needle on this machine. And we also carry Organ brand needles. So Organ are very, very, um, they're great needles to have, um, very popular brand of needles. So in the Organ, we also have the embroidery, the 7511. And we also, in Schmetz and in Oregon, we carry the new embroidery anti-glue needles. So, you know, in embroidery, we love to use sticky stuff, just how it is, you know, if we wanna be successful, sometimes if we're floating something in a hoop and we, we need some stick, we need the stick, right? So. I try not to use it too much, but I certainly do use sticky sprays and sticky stabilizers when the job calls for that. So definitely we've had very good feedback on the embroidery anti-glue needles where your needle does not get gummed up. So what happens when a needle gets gummed up if you don't have an anti-glue needle? You could have an issue in your embroidery because the gum off the products that you're using can close the eye or affect the eye of the needle that you're working on and you may have like shredding issues. So it's nice when nothing sticks to the needle and it's anti-glue. Okay, so I've gone over the optional accessories, the included accessories and some of the um, needles that you might need. And now I wanna talk to you one second about optional accessories. So if you look at your, man, at your manual that comes with the machine, you should look at optional accessories because there are many accessories that are popular, especially the walking foot or the quilting foot. Remember, this is a sewing embroidery, but it's also a quilting machine. If you go to your church and you want to quilt with this machine, obviously you can't put a king size quilt in there, but you certainly there are optional feet, there's a quilting guide. So make sure that you look at your optional accessories and you'll find that it'll also tell you the part code here. So if you wanna call us and say, ask us, do you have this foot or whatever, the part codes are in there. So that's really nice to have too. So make sure that you take a look at that. Now I'm gonna show you the custom settings screen on this machine. So this is where I would go in to customize the settings or the default settings of the machine to how I want them. So I would come over here to, it looks like a little page that's ticked over. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch that and you'll see that on my LCD screen, my color screen, imagine that on this machine, so nice, it actually, goes directly to page three. Can you see here that there's eight pages? The machine is showing me up in this, in this right-hand corner that in my custom settings, there's eight pages. And it took me to straight to page number three. Why did it do that? Because the machine knows that I have the embroidery arm on. I'm set to embroider. So it jumps straight to the embroidery settings. But I'm gonna go ahead and with my arrows here, I'm gonna go back to page one. So I'm gonna start right at the beginning. So the first thing that you see 
is width control. And you can see here, this little picture is actually a picture of this. This here is my speed control in sewing. It is not a speed control in embroidery. It's only in sewing. And it, if I was, it comes default switched off. If I was to switch this on, I'm telling the machine, I want this here to turn into a width control on my zigzag. When I go into sewing, I'll show you how that works. Okay, so now make sure that if you were to switch this on because you want to adjust your zigzag width, that you go ahead and switch it off. It will not switch back to off automatically when you switch off the machine. These settings stay put until you come in here and change them manually yourself. So the next one is your fine adjustment vertically. So if you were to be um, stitching in your decorative stitching, this is in sewing, and you find that your stitch, your decorative stitch, say maybe it's the little alligator or something, one of the built-in decorative stitches in here, it's not lining up quite right. Um, depending on the fabric that you're using or your thread and you want to just tweak it a little bit, you could come in here and adjust it and it's going to adjust it vertically. Can you see the arrows going up and down? So it'll line things up a little bit better. And that's best seen if you do a test piece. If you find that it's not lining up, get yourself a test piece of fabric and try adjusting this and you'll be able to line it up better. Okay. The next setting we have is twin needle and you can see that it's grayed out. Why is it grayed out? Because the machine knows right now I've got the embroidery arm on and it's not letting me switch this on. It does not want me to embroider with a twin needle. So it's not giving me the option of a twin needle. When I take the embroidery arm off this machine and go into my custom settings, and the machine knows that I'm in sewing mode because I took the embroidery arm off, this will be lit up. And definitely, I, if I wanted to use a twin needle, I would come in here and switch it to on. Why? Because if I select a stitch that is um, not appropriate for a twin needle, I could break my needle because the needles are going to be swinging from side to side and they may hit my throat plate. So when I switch this on to twin needle and tell the machine I'm putting a twin needle on, it'll gray out the stitches in the sewing section that it does not want me to use. So it, it, it kind of helps itself or that you won't hurt it by doing that. Okay, let's move on. I, this is where I go through my pages. So now I'm on page two. So you can select what you want your initial position to be when you switch on your machine. So anything that is dark, obviously, is what you've selected. So this machine is selected to center needle position in sewing. So if I wanted left needle position every time I switch my machine on, I could change that. Okay, now we're going to page three, which is where my embroidery um, settings start. Okay. So the machine is, the default is four inch by four inch. That's the hoop that comes with the machine. I can scroll through and it'll show me what other optional um, frames or hoops are available for this machine. And it's indicating that there's a one inch by two and a half inch. If I was to leave this, set at one by two and a half, I'm going to move out of my custom settings a minute just to show you what the machine is doing. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to just quickly select a letter. We're going to get back to this in a minute. But what I want to show you is that up here visually, it's showing me that I selected a smaller hoop in the custom settings, and it's showing me where it's going to, how it's going to look like in my smaller hoop. So now I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go back to my custom settings and keep going. It's asking me, is it okay to cancel? I'm going to say, okay. 
So I'm going to open up. I'm going back to my custom settings. By the way, this stylus is optional to this machine. We sell them as an optional notion. They work. It works well on my LCD screen, but it does not work for changing my settings or scrolling through my pages down here. So I'm switching back and forth. Okay, I'm back to page three. I'm going to actually that this size of hoop is not very popular. Um, most everything that you can embroider on this machine that fits in a four by four, that's going to be your most important hoop size. So I would recommend that you leave it at four by four. And then the arrows down here, let's just select, see what's happened now. I have a center point, so I can leave it at center point. If I want to divide my screen in four or into quarters, I can do that. If I want to set it up with a grid, I can do that, or I can have a blank screen. I'm going to go ahead so you understand very clearly what it is I'm showing you here. I'm going to go ahead like I just did before, and I'm going to leave. I'm just going to select the letter A and set it. And you can see now that this is what I call my blank canvas here. Can you see now it's got a grid on it? So I could actually take my letter and move it and I can use my grid in helping me position more accurately. Okay, so let me go back. It asked me, is it okay to cancel? So when I'm traveling through my pages, I use these, but if I want to jump back a screen, I'm going to use this arrow. So go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and open this again. Okay, so the next, I'm going to set this back to blank. Um, so the next setting that I have is embroidery frame identification view. So what happens if I was to select, remember this machine, I only have the option of two hoops and it only comes with a four by four. If I, if I was to tell the machine here, I want to use my one inch by two and a half inch and I have my embroidery frame identification view on, it's actually going to gray out. Let me just show you. It's going to, see how these are grayed out? The machine is telling me, you selected a one inch by two and a half inch hoop and you cannot use any of these. They're not an option. They don't fit in that hoop. So again, it's helping me. And you'll find that there's very little that'll actually fit in such a small hoop. Basically, if you wanted to do a lot of monogramming, small monograms, that's when you would use that hoop. So let's go back. Um, and I'm going to go back to my custom settings and I'm going to switch that off. So I would say to you, leave it switched off um, and it, you'll be happier that way because most everything that you do, you'll want to embroider as, as big as you possibly can is ge the general tendency. And I'm going to set this back to four by four. So leave this at four by four and leave your, your embroidery frame identification view off. Um, unless you purchase the smaller hoop. Okay, let's keep on. We're going to go to page four now. So here is name of color is your first selection here. And here is your um, name of brand. So generally what the way I describe this is there are some embroiderers that are kind of in a box in that they have a lot of Robeson Anton maybe embroidery thread and they want the machine to tell them when they select a design what number of Robeson Anton thread they need. So if say you were embroidering um, some flowers, you, you have an embroidery design that's flowers. When you get to your embroidery screen, actually I'm going to go ahead and sh show it to you. So if I was to come in here and select, I love these little pumpkins, set, edit end, go to embroidery. Um, it's telling me here how many minutes and what color. You know what? I did that wrong. Hold on one second. I'm just going to go back. Uh, 
I have to switch that off. Do you see that it's my two options in the top one are name of color or number? So I'm gonna go back and correct that. Now watch what happened. When I come back to this screen, before it said khaki, orange, pumpkin, it had the name of the color. And I like, and most embroiderers like, name of color. If it's turquoise blue, it says turquoise blue, sky blue, yellow, light yellow. Here, it's identifying the color by the color number of the Robison Anton poly thread. So again, um, I'm gonna come back, back, I'm gonna go back to the settings. You see how I travel back through the screens with this one? Okay, I'm gonna open up my settings and I'm gonna go back to, I was on page four, right? So I'm gonna leave this at name of color and then it doesn't matter what this says underneath because the machine is gonna list the color names. Okay, here you have the option of having metric or inches. Um, most of us work in inches, so, but again, you have the option, however you want to set it. So now I'm gonna go travel to page five. Here, this, well, the thumbnail size of your, of your um, designs in your LCD screen, so to speak, most everybody likes to see them as big as possible. So the bigger it is, the better it is to see. So I would say select the bigger one. The next selection here is really has nothing to do with your embroidery. It has to do with how you want your machine to look. So say the first selection, it's pointing to my what I call my work canvas. So I'm going to select a color and I'll show you what that means. And then here, the next one down are my thumbnails. I'm gonna select a turquoise blue and I'm gonna say okay. Now watch what happens when I select something. I selected purple for my main canvas, so to speak. And I selected turquoise blue for my um, thumbnails. So it doesn't affect the machine in any way. It just makes your screen more colorful. However, if you wanted to embroider on a purple shirt or on a purple project and you wanted to showcase or preview your machine, your design on that color, you would go in and do that. It's up to you. We do have a customer that switched everything to purple because purple is her favorite color and she likes it that way. So. Again, it's up to you, it's your machine. I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna select white and say okay. And I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna select white and say okay. And we are going to move on. So we're on page five, I'm gonna to go to page six. Needle position up or down. Um, it, again, it's up to you if you want, when your machine is in resting position, so to speak, you want your needle down, you can set it that it'll automatically go down or you can set it that it stays up. You can switch the buzzer off. Some people get annoyed by having a buzzer on. I like it because I know that whatever, when I touch my screen, if, if it buzzes, I know the machine read and is doing, is, I was effective with my stylus, so to speak. You can adjust your opening screen. You can change the language on your machine. What else have we got here? You can switch the light on or off on your machine. I actually do switch my light on and off sometimes on my machine. If I'm embroidering or sewing on something very dark, maybe a black fabric, sometimes you get glare when you have your, um, sewing light on, your light on, you get glare off of it and you can't see what you're doing. So it's, I think it's nice to be able to switch your light off. Input sensitivity. Um, normally you wouldn't need to adjust this, but it's nice that they have it there. If you find that your screen is not reacting to your touch, because everybody has a different touch, um, you can, I, and I would, this is a point where I would refer to my manual. I would, um, 
you can adjust the sensitivity of this screen so that the machine reads your touch. So that's where that would be. Um, and again, I would refer to my manual. It's, it's very easy steps. And you know, these machines are very user friendly. Um, so they give you a lot of messages and a lot of steps to help guide you through uh, the workings of the machine. Okay, so now we're, we're that's page seven. We're gonna go to page eight. So this is the number of stitches that your machine has. This is the number, this number is particular to your machine. So this is this machine number, and this is the version of this machine. So if you want to check once in a while, you will, you can go on babylock.com and check. You can go to the Verve section of the machine of the website and see if there's an update. Updates are free for this machine. So updates are free for any machine. But what updates do is normally they correct uh, maybe a little glitch or some whatever. It's kind of like on your cell phone, an update. You can go there and there might be an update to 1.10. And again, it'll have the steps on babylock.com, the steps to follow for you to update your machine to keep it current. Okay, so that's page eight of eight of your custom settings. So I am gonna go back. Now I'm gonna show you how to remove and attach the embroidery arm properly. So I have the embroidery machine on right now and I want to remove the arm. As you can see on my little LCD screen, there is a little a button here and I am gonna to touch it. I'm gonna just lean over here and it says, and I'm gonna say, okay. Did you see what happened? The little message tells you when you're gonna remove the arm to move that button. And what it does is it moves this arm all over that holds your hoop. So now it's in the proper position to be removed. So the next thing that you need to do is to switch your machine off. Always when you engage or disengage your embroidery arm, the machine needs to be off. Now I'm gonna put my hand in here and there's a clip in here. You're gonna clip and you're gonna slide off very carefully and now your unit is on. If I wanted to engage my unit, I would carefully, of course, take your storage compartment off or your extension table and then take your embroidery arm and very carefully slide it on until you hear it click and now you're ready to switch it on. Now I'm gonna go over the embroidery features, the embroidery section of this machine that's so easy and fun to use. So you'll see here, I have my embroidery screen selected, so to speak and I have different windows or categories that I can select. So we have the exclusive um, embroidery designs to Baby Lock. We have what looks like some beautiful quilting designs. We have monograms, we have fonts, we have frames. And then we also have a section here where it shows the picture of a machine with a little pocket behind it. That means if I wanted to save an embroidery design that I had created, so to speak, and I wanted to embroider again, if I had saved it to the memory pocket of the machine, I could select that and I could retrieve it from there. I also have the option of bringing more designs over with a USB stick. So if I went online and I purchased some embroidery designs for a four by four machine, I could save them to a USB stick and then bring them in. I have a little USB port here on the end of the machine. So if I wanted to open up something from my USB, I would select that and you would probably find that the designs would be in the B pocket. But let's go back here. Here, just to remind you, it says always press when moving, when removing the embroidery unit. So that moves your embroidery arm over. Um, so let's go ahead and open up this category. So I touched it and 
Here's um, embroidery design 001, 002. So again, this says page one of nine. So I have nine pages of designs in this category. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through. I, and remember you have your um, reference guide that I showed you in the beginning with, with the included accessories where I could look at these designs there if I wanted to. It is kind of fun looking at them on the screen though too. Okay, I'm at page nine. I'm going to travel backwards and I'm going to go ahead and select, let's see what this one looks like. Oh, that's like a, a pina colada or something. Now, right away, it's telling me up here, do you see this little red indicator here, that this will not fit in one, my one and a half, my smallest hoop, the one and a half by two and a half or whatever it was, the small one that we talked about in the beginning. Oh, and it's telling me that you'll need to use your four by four hoop here. Over here, it's telling me the height of this design is 2.48 inches and the width of the design is 1.17. So, and it's in inches. So remember when we were talking about the custom settings in the machine that I left it, I said, I like to work in inches. I had set it to inches. So, um, so if I like that design, I can go ahead and set it. If I don't like it, oh, by the way, if you can't see it properly in that window, I forgot. There's a magnifier here. So here's my design again. So I, I get a more clear view and I can say, okay, and I can decide, you know what? I don't like that. I wanna go back and I wanna go back some more. I can travel backwards through my designs again. And if I don't like any of them in this category, I'll just select this. And this takes me back to my home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, you know what I did? I just opened up the same category. I'm gonna go into my exclusives. And here I've got more categories. So let's go ahead and I opened up Celebrate, which are the seasonal ones. So let's go ahead, even though Christmas is not here right now, I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. Or if you wanna look at another one, you can touch them and they come up. That's very pretty, that's monochromatic. Um, I always say the hardest part is deciding what it is you want to do. So what is this one, a Christmas stocking? No, I don't wanna do any of those. Let me go into my florals. Um, so, Let's go ahead and select this leaf. We'll select that one. See how I can toggle back and forth and take a look at them? So if that's what I wanna do, I can go ahead and set it. So when I set a design, it, I'm telling the machine, I want this machine, this embroidery design, I selected it. So once I set it, it takes me to my editing page. So editing means you can change things around. So I have a few options that I can change. If it's grayed out, the machine knows that this is not a font. So it has grayed out the options that would be for a font. So I have the option, I can move it. Now remember, this is a, this is a big design. It's 3.56 by 3.22. So I cannot move it around a, a lot, obviously, because I'm in a four by four. So I can move it a certain degree and then it's going to stop because I would outgrow my embroidery field. If I want to center it again, you just touch that, brings it back to the center. If I wanted to size it, I can size it 20% up and 10% down. So why, why does it put those limitations on me? Because this machine does not have Recal what they call recalculating software where it's going to add stitches or take away stitches so that the embroidery de design looks good. So if I want to size it down, I would select the box that has the arrows going in from all sides. That size is down proportionately. So when you hear that little double ding, so to speak, 
it means I've sized it down to what I can do and then it stops me. So if I want to size it up and you can see that as I'm sizing it up, my proportions here are changing. So I can also size it disproportionately if I want. Um, and this here is a reset. When you touch this white square box, it resets it to the original size. I'm gonna size it down a little bit. And so once I'm done sizing, touch OK, because you're done with your sizing and you wanna close your size screen, so to speak. So then my next screen, I have the ability to be able to rotate a little bit. Again, it's a big design, so I can't do an awful lot of editing here, but you see I'm rotating it one degree at a time to the right. And you can see that over here, my degree is changing. So let, let me go back to the beginning. I'm gonna set reset. And you see this says zero degrees. If I rotate it one degree to the right, it's telling me what my degree of rotation is. So why would I want to know that? Because maybe, I'm, maybe I want to come back and do the same leaf and rotate it to the, to the left. And I want to know how much I rotated this one to the right. So I rotated it eight degrees. So now I come back, want to do another leaf, rotate it to the left. I would rotate it this way. So, so that's why it's telling me that. And then I'm going to reset it and just set it back. So if you want to be accurate in positioning and have the same degrees, that's where you would look. So I'm done with rotation, so I'm going to say OK. And now this is my next screen. Now, um, this is where you can preview or showcase your embroidery design in a different color. So when I open my color library, so to speak, the first thing the machine is telling me is that this, the background of the leaf, which is the first color it would embroider out, it's salmon pink. Of course, the machine doesn't know if I have lime green, blue, or yellow on top. It's gonna to embroider whatever color I have up here. But if you're a beginner embroiderer, you pr you're probably gonna follow the colorways that are suggested um, on the machine for your embroidery design, but I do have this option, which is really nice. So say I want to change that to yellow. I want to see what would it look like in yellow. I can change yellow. This actually is the background color, so you can't see it very well, the change. I'm going to go to the next color that the machine would stitch out, and this is like the amber red. It's more of a magenta to me. But say I want um, to preview it in, let's see here. I can actually scroll through my colors here. Do you see what I'm doing here? Do you see how as I go down, it's selecting a different box? And if I go sideways, look at what it's doing. It's selecting a different color and it's changing the color of that and giving me, oh, I like that, the orange. Isn't that nice? That's wild. Okay, so I like that colorway. I'm going to leave it. And now I'm going to go to my next color in my embroidery design. And my next color is showing me here. This is my preview window. This is my design, my complete design. So say I, I actually like that colorway, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want to see, oh, look at that one. It's selected black. So if it was Halloween, that actually looks kind of cool. So maybe you have designs built into your machine that you normally in that color wouldn't stitch it out, but wow, how cool is that in that color? Okay, so now let's travel to the next color. The next color is the vein of the leaf. So I'm being really, um, experimental here. Say I wanted to do that in red. I could actually just touch it with my stylus or I can select with my arrows up or down. So you see again, it's just changing the vein. So kind of fun, kind of useful. A lot of people don't go in here and do this, but I think why not? It's, it's, it's a nice preview. So say I like that combination. 
I'm done changing my color, so I'm going to say OK. Whenever you open up a window, you need to say OK to close it. OK, so I was in there. Now, what is this one? This is mirror image. So when I select that, you can see that it darkens. It turns the, my leaf to a different angle. It mirror images it. So kind of nice to have too, very useful. Okay, these two are grayed out, not an option for this design. Um, don't forget, you've got a magnifier here. I can magnify it up to 300%, 125%, and I've also got this window. So ooh, I love that. So don't be afraid to open up windows and then close them again. Okay, I also have the option to delete. I don't want to delete it, but you could if you wanted to. Um, so now I'm going to I'm going to actually go back in here. Do you see that these little arrows stayed on there? That's because I left it at 125 percent. And so if say I go back to 150, I can actually touch my arrows up and down and I can take a closer look at different elements of my embroidery design at a closer look. But I'm going to bring it back to default, which is 100%, say OK. OK, so I don't want to delete. You have the option to add. So if I select Add, it takes me back to my main embroidery page. So basically, the machine is asking me, so what do you want to add? Do you want to add another exclusive design? Or from here, do you want to add fonts or a monogram, maybe a frame? Let's just, for the heck of it, go in here and select fonts. So you can see right away that this says it's page one of two. So I can scroll through. These are the Japanese fonts. Um, so say I like this font. So all you do is touch it. So I'm going to keep this very simple because I'm going to come back to fonts in a minute. All we want to do is add. So what do we, that was a leaf. So maybe I'll select L. And right away, you'll see that once I select a letter, options open up down below. I now have the option of large, medium, or small. So this is large right now. You can see large is highlighted. It's telling me this letter is 3.2 inches high by 2.89 inches wide. When I select, I think to myself, you know what, that's too big. So I selected medium, so the medium is smaller. The small is even smaller. So now I'm going to write leaf, and I'm going to set it. And you can't see it, but it's actually on my window. I can actually touch it with my stylus because I know every time you bring in an embroidery design, it's going to center it in the middle of your embroidery screen, so to speak. So I can put it wherever I want. I can see proportion right away. I can see that it's um, it, it fits. It's not too big. It doesn't overwhelm the leaf. Um, so now you can see here that my font editing features showed up. I'm not going to talk about that in this um, um, design, so to speak, right now, but I do want to show you this. This, if I like that design and I have to embroider more than one, if you touch this, it saves it into the memory pocket of the machine. So when I touch save, the machine asks me, where do you want to save it? Do you want to save it to the memory pocket of your machine? Or if I have a USB stick connected to my machine, do you want to save it to your USB? So I don't have a USB stick right now, so I'm going to say just save it to the pocket of the machine. So remember in the beginning when we were on the main screen, I said to you on your main embroidery screen, if you come back tomorrow and you want to pull it out of your pocket, you can. Okay, so now if I'm done editing, I tell the machine I've finished editing. In other words, I don't want to change anything else. So I touch Edit End. And it takes me to one more screen where I still have the option 
of being able to move it. And you can see now when I'm moving it, my hoop is moving. If I want to bring it back to the center, I can. If I want to rotate it a little bit, I still have the option to rotate. I still have the option to save it to my pocket. But this is what I want to show you. See this little thing here, this little um, selection shows an arrow going around. This is very helpful. When you touch this and you touch this, it will actually, the machine starts, the hoop starts moving right away. And what it's doing is that it's surrounding the area where your embroidery design is going to be stitched. I'm going to show you that again. So it goes down to the bottom left, up to the top right, top left, and then it goes, it'll go back to the center of my embroidery design. Now I want to show you what happens on my screen. So when I select this, I'm going to magnify this a little bit. Well, I'm going to select this and look at what is happening on my screen. Can you see the little green cross is moving? That's where my needle is right now as it moves around and then it goes back to the center. So this is important when you're trying to position a design exactly. This, this gives you a preview of where that design is going to be and how large the design is, is going to be. Now, this here is what I call this in slow motion. It's like a slow motion trace. So if you, if you want to see where is the bottom left of my design and I touch bottom left, you see how my little green cross moved down to the bottom left corner. So it's kind of this in slow motion. So now I want to see where my center is on the, on the bottom of my design. So I can do a slow motion trace. And then you can, it's also following it on my screen with the green arrow. So it's a, it's a really nice thing to have. So it helps you to be more precise in embroidery. And then when you're done, make sure that you select center again. So it brings it back to the center. Okay, so I'm done doing what I'm gonna do. I'm going to touch embroidery, telling the machine, I'm done. I want to stitch this out. So this is my last screen. So here's where it tells me, make sure you have your embroidery foot on. It's your Q foot. This design is 7,915 stitches. It's going to take 20 minutes to stitch out and it's five color changes. And then it tells you here, the first thing I'm going to stitch is this, this is my preview window, and it's very important that you look at this. The machine's telling you, this is what I'm gonna stitch first. And so if you want it to be yellow, change your color to yellow, and it's gonna stitch for four minutes in the yellow. When it's done stitching that, this will go away, and this next one will come up, so you would put harvest gold, you would change your thread, and you would put harvest gold on and that's going to take seven minutes. And so this is the stitch out. This is the picture of what it's going to stitch next. Okay, so we have something else here. So what is this? This, it, you're telling, can you see that it's dark so it's selected? This is where you leave this selected because it's going to cut your thread at the end. This window here, when I touch it, this is an important window and it's on every, I want to say every baby lock embroidery machine because it's an important feature. This is where I can travel through my design either one stitch at a time, 10 stitches at a time. Do you see that it says plus one, plus 10, plus 100? And the top line says minus one minus 10 minus 100. So when would I use this? If you were to have a thread break, say your thread starts to shred and it breaks. And so you change, um, you rethread your machine and you feel like the last 10 stitches that it did, you want to go back and over them. In other words, you want to overlap. Before you press start again, 
open up this window and tell the machine, I want you to go back 10 stitches. That would be minus 10, right? If you feel like you want to go back 20 stitches, you could touch this twice, it'll, it'll go back 20. If you want to go back 100, so you can do that. So this is something that is important. This here is similar to what was in the color library. You can go through your stitch out a whole spool at a time. So say I touch plus spool. When I touch that, watch what happens it's taken me to harvest gold. So this question actually gets asked quite a bit in the machine department. And the question is, can I skip a color completely in embroidery, in my embroidery? Will this machine do this? Yes, it will. If I didn't want to stitch out that first one, I'm gonna go back one color to remind you if I didn't want the machine to stitch that out, I just want it to start at harvest gold. I could come here and say skip, do plus one whole spool color, and it jumps straight to that, and I've skipped the previous one. So I hope that helps you there. You'll also realize that when I skipped that color, even though I haven't stitched anything yet, my machine went to 1,400 and 29 stitches because it skipped the whole first section. So now, if I was ready to embroider, I would basically thread my machine, put my presser foot down, and you'll see that when I put my presser foot down, the machine, the start stop button, went from red to green, so I am ready to embroider. I would just press start and the machine would start stitching. Now I'm going to show you how to embroider fonts with the Baby Lock Verve. Fonts are, and monograms are very popular in embroidery. It seems that everybody wants their project personalizing. So let's go. Let me show you how easy it is. So here built in are monograms. Very simple. I'm going to select monogram. It tells me up here there's eight pages of this particular monogram alphabet. So I can scroll through to the letter that I want. So let's say I want the letter P. It tells you what number that letter is. It's 0 0.16. So I'm going to go ahead. It tells me right away. It brings it up on my window here, on my canvas, so to speak. It tells me here this monogram is 2.15 inches high by 2.65. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it and move into my editing. Now, I have the options of move, size, rotate. Remember this is very, very nice to have. I can preview it in another color by selecting another color. When I'm done, I just say okay. I can add something if I want. All I wanna do is a monogram. So I'm gonna go ahead and say edit end. I really don't wanna change anything. And I wanna go ahead, I can do my trace here. So it's gonna outline again where my monogram is gonna sit. If I had moved my monogram up or down, my trace would be in a different place. So I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna to touch embroidery. And just like that, I'm into my embroidery screen. You see, very fast, very easy. It's telling me this design is gonna take, or this monogram is gonna take six minutes, 2,428 stitches, two color changes. The first thing I'm gonna embroider is the letter P, and then that's four minutes, and then you can see that the lavender is the small detail like a vine around it. So very quick, very easy, okay. So now let's travel back to the main screen. And I'm actually gonna select this. On the bottom here, you can see that's a picture of the hoop. And when I select that, it asks me, is it okay to cancel? And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm not gonna stitch that out. And this selector takes me straight back to my embroidery home screen. So now let's try going into the fonts. So we have two pages of fonts. I'm gonna go ahead and select font number one, and right away it selects, 
uppercase and lowercase. You can see a tab that's highlighted here. And you can see over here that the alphabet seems to finish at the letter O. But the machine is telling me you're only on page one. So if I want a letter that's not on the screen or I want lowercase, I need to travel through my pages with my arrows. So say I want to write, um, I'm going to keep it simple, A, B, C, and then I want lowercase. I'm going to travel through here, and here's my lowercase, A, and look at what it tells me. The pattern extends to the outside of the embroidery frame add no additional characters. So in other words, if I wanted to add more, I've outgrown my embroidery field. It's just too much. So I have an option here. What's my option? You see this little arrow going down? This is a real, this to me is a high-end feature on an entry-level embroidery machine. If I select this, and now I select A, B, C, watch what happens when I set it. It drops it down to my next line and it spaces it beautifully. So on a lot of machines, if you've previously embroidered before, you would have to almost stitch this out first and then bring back your second set of letters and position it yourself and set it. This machine does it by just using that drop down feature. So if Imagine if it's Christmas and you wanted to write Merry Christmas on a towel, you could use your drop down feature. We have, again, um, personalizing and fonts are very popular, so great feature to have. Okay, so this is what I have on my screen right now, and now you can see that I have a red box. This is the last element, so to speak, that I added. I have my editing features here of what I can do, what the machine is allowing me to do with those fonts. Now, did you see how when I selected, when I touched the top of fonts, the top ABC, my red box changed. So just by touching, you can select the element of your design that you want to change. So maybe I want to, let's see what my options are here. Maybe I want to move it. I can actually move it by dragging it with my stylus, but if it's always recommended that you use your move screen. So if I wanted spacing to be further apart or closer together, I can do that. I can size it if I want. And look, when I touch size, I also have the option of large, medium, or small. So really cool, really easy. I always I encourage you to, to touch the buttons because you don't know what's behind there. You don't know how easy it is. Okay, so maybe I want to size that one down. Just select it, touch size, and now say, okay, I want those medium, and now I want to maybe select them and move them. See how easy this is? Okay, so you have the ability to rotate them also. Um, I'm just going to put them back a little bit closer together. I have the ability to change a color if I want. Super easy. Okay. So whatever, again, you've selected, you can change a color. I have the ability to adjust my density. So density means that it's going to add um, some stitching. It's going to make it thicker. The, Density, that's the preset, is 100%, but you could, if you stitch this out, say you test it out and you feel like there's a little bit of fabric showing and that you want it to be a little bit thicker, go ahead and come in here and adjust your, den your density. Okay, now let's open up font edit here. Lots of selections for editing my fonts. First one is multicolor. So generally what this machine would do is that it treats this whole section, can you see there's a, a red box around all three letters, as one. You can see when you select fonts that they're always black. But I want to break it up. I may want the letter A to be red, and I want the machine to stop stitching after A so that I can change my color. 
So I tell the machine I want multicolor, and then I open up my thread color library, so to speak. So you see the letter A is here, and I'm gonna tell the machine I want red. And you see how it changes that one? And now up here, I'm going to say, travel to the next color. This is color plus. So it travels to the next one, and maybe I want that purple. And so, and then it's gonna to travel to the C. I'm gonna to touch, go to the next color here, and maybe I want that yellow. So it's changed it. You can see it's made my, um, changed my design to multicolor. So again, it's super nice that. Let me go back into font edit. Array, you can arc it if you want. Now remember, whatever the red boxes are around is what it's gonna edit. So if I wanted to arc this one, I could arc that. And here you can tighten the arc if you want. This is another one of those windows that I encourage you to open and play with. Just touch and see what it does. I'm gonna go out of there. This is nice too. Say you don't like that font and you want to change it. The machine gives you another chance in this window of changing the font without having to delete this and go back and select another one. So say I think, you know what? I think maybe I prefer that font. So you see what it did? I'm gonna magnify it here. It changed my whole font to another font. So again, I can showcase it if I wanted to see what it looks like in that one. I like that one. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna say, okay. So that's where you change your fonts. This here spaces them. So you see A, B, C here and two arrows going out. So when I touch this, whatever I've got selected, it'll space them apart. And this squeezes them back together. And this is a reset. So again, very easy. This here is very cool too. This is a knife here. So if you want to cut your design apart, can you see that on my screen here? I'm gonna magnify it. Oh, the little knife doesn't show up. I have a little knife appeared here. So say I want to cut that letter A away from my A, B, C. It automatically selects the first letter, which is A. If I wanted to cut it, I would say cut. And now this letter A has been cut away from the group. And so again, very cool. If I had wanted to cut away the letter A and B, I would have moved my knife over with my um, selectors here, my arrows. So now I'm, I'm dealing with two elements instead of one element strung, strung together. So I can really be creative. Um, this one here, again, is very cool. They're all very useful and you should, you should use them. So again, whatever is selected, I have the option of changing my size. That's so maybe I want that one large and I want this one to be small. So play with it. This here is my selector. Can you see that when I touch these arrows, the red box bounces around and selects different elements in my design. So that's kind of cool too. You don't need to put, if you don't have a stylus and you're selecting with your finger, maybe if you've got a very small design, your finger is selecting elements in your design that you don't want. So by using your selector here, it's traveling from element to element. Okay, so now I'm done. So I'm gonna say, okay, if I wanna save it to my memory pocket, I can do that. If I wanna add something, I can still add to my heart's um, content as long as it all fits in my four by four. So if I say edit in now, and embroidery, I'm ready to embroider it out. It's telling me 1,948 stitches, five minutes, six color changes, and the first thing I'm gonna embroider is the letter A. Now I'm gonna show you how to merge frames with fonts. So coming to the screen over here, my last option is my frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, and you'll see that I have a series of shapes on my screen. So say 
I want to select a heart shape. As soon as I select the shape, the machine lets me know or asks me, what, what stitch out do you want for that frame? I have several options, right? And so I've actually got four pages. I can see here I'm on page one of four. So I can scroll through my pages and I'm gonna go ahead and select the blanket stitch, stitch, num stitch number 12. So it brings up my heart shape in a blanket stitch. If I wanted a lacy one, I could select a lacy one. So different stitch outs. Okay, let's go ahead and leave. I'm actually, I'm gonna select the blanket stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it. And here is my heart. It's telling me the size. If you wanna size it up, I am actually, I'm gonna size it up. I'm gonna say, okay. And now I want to add a font. So I'm gonna to touch add and it brings me back here. So I'm gonna open up my font. I'm gonna select this one and I'll select the letter B, go ahead and set it. And it puts it right in the center. If I don't want it there, I could actually drag it around very easily. I've got my selector here. If I wanted to select without touching the screen, this is what selects the elements. So I could select and move without touching my finger to the screen. So I can place it where I want. If, if I wanted to add something else, I could select add and I would go back to my main embroidery screen. I'm gonna leave it exactly like it is. If I wanted to save it, I can save it there. I'm gonna say edit end, embroidery and it's ready to embroider. All I need to do is press the start button. Now I'm gonna show you the sewing features on this machine. So when you want to come to this screen, uh, down here, you'll see that there's a little button that shows like utility and decorative stitches. So you could actually touch that button and it'll bring you to this screen. So I, I'm on my main sewing screen now. I changed my embroidery foot to a sewing foot and I also added my little extension table so that I have a really nice base to work on. So I have different categories for my sewing stitches. I have category one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in your manual, it, it'll, tell you the name of each category, but basically number one are your utility stitches. And you can pretty much see by the, um, the pictures here what the category is. Like for instance, number four, you've got your buttonholes and your darning. Um, number seven are your satin stitches. So e easy to figure out. And it also has lettering in, um, your sewing mode in case you want to maybe stitch a quilt label or maybe you want to stitch your name on some ribbon to identify a, a garment or something. So I'm going to go ahead and select category number one. And right away, I have a selection of stitches that light up on my screen. And again, I'm on page one of five, so I can scroll through my zigzag stitches, I've got overcasting stitches. I've got, when you see P's and Q's, these are piecing and quilting stitches. Now, one of the things that's really nice about this machine, remember it's a small quilting machine that you can take to your guild with you, is that if you refer to your manual, when I talked about the, access, the included accessories that come with this machine, you, the markings on your bobbin cover help to guide you as to if you want a quarter inch um, and where you want to put what stitch you want to select for quarter inch. So use your manual for reference for that and um, position your needle appropriately so that you can get your scant quarter inch or your quarter inch. So P's and Q's are your piecing and quilting stitches. So I'm just going to go back actually to page 
one. I'm going to start at the beginning here. There's actually here is a basting stitch, 1.07. By the way, like if I say to you it's 1.1-07, it means I'm on screen or category number one, and this is stitch number seven. So I'm going to go back to page one, and I have selected stitch number 1-03, that's center needle. And when you see the little dash on the top as opposed to a little dot, that means when I touch my reverse reinforce, it's going to travel backwards. If I select stitch number 1-04 and it has a little dot instead of a dash, it means that when I select my reverse reinforce, it's going to lock in position and not travel backwards. So this is a really nice stitch for quilters because maybe you want to end your stitching in the center of a quilt and you just want a couple of locking stitches. So then I would select stitch 1-04. And this is a heavy um, beading stitch or a triple stitch, which is really nice. So again, a great assortment of stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and select. I'm going to leave that selected. And I'm going to select, this is, this is what I would call a high-end feature on a, an entry-level machine. I'm going to select Reinforce and Thread Cut. And you're going to see what happens. But first of all, since I'm on this end of the screen, let's show this. You see here, it's telling me, my, my machine is telling me, for this stitch, use foot J. And when I talked about included accessories, I told you that the feet are all um, lettered so that you can identify which foot to use for um, the stitch, for the appropriate stitch. And also coming across the top of the screen here, I've got my width. Whenever something is in a black box, that's the default or factory setting of the machine. So my width is 3.5, my length is um, 2.5, and my left-right shift, which means, left-right shift means I can move my needle or my stitch to the left or to the right. So let's look here, and I'm going to open this up and show you what opens up here. So if I want to adjust my stitch length, I'm just going to go back so that you can see again what I touched. If I want to adjust my stitch length, this is the window that I would open up and I can adjust my stitch length. So default is 2.5. Um, I always like a stitch length of three, but you can set it at whatever you want. But if you were to change it and you have a project that you want to come back to tomorrow and use the same settings that you've changed or adjusted, here is where you would save it to the memory of the machine. So if I save it and tomorrow I come back, all I need to do is remember that I was on stitch 1-03 and it'll pull it up in the settings that I changed. So it has a memory for that. Now let's just look at the left right shift. I can adjust, if I touch plus, my needle is moving over to the right. So this is a really, really nice feature because sometimes you don't want to, you want to position your top, maybe you're doing some top stitching and you want your foot to ride completely flat on your project, but you want to position your needle. Can you hear it moving, all, all these increments? So I'm leaving my cork underneath here and positioning my needle where I want it to stitch. And that's a really nice feature. Okay, so, and this, by the way, this is safe to memory. This little um, odd looking kind of half open box, when you touch that, it resets my width, length, and let left, right shift to default settings. So it'll bring it all back to the black box. If I want to re if I've changed them all and I just want to reset them at one go, that's what that does. Okay, so super easy, right? So I want to show you, I just selected this and this. That, that What I'm telling the machine is that I want you to automatically reverse or reinforce, depending on what stitch I selected, 
and cut when I am done stitching. So I want you to see what happens. I'm going to leave it selected as straight stitch. Now, another thing with this machine, I do not have my presser foot plugged in. I'm going to sew right now or demonstrate with my start stop button. So when I press start, the machine is going to start to sew and it's automatically going to reverse because I've told it to and it's going to keep stitching. So it reversed the appropriate amount of stitches for that stitch. And now when I finish my seam and you can see how easily it's sewing through cork, I didn't change my needle or anything. Now say I'm getting to the end of my seam and I want it to stop. I'm going to tell the machine, I'm just going to press my reverse and it's going to automatically reverse the appropriate and it cut my thread because I told it when it when you finish reinforcing I want you to automatically cut it and now when I take this out it's beautifully stitched and reinforced at either end so super nice high-end feature at a on a great machine at an affordable price and if I want to deselect it Maybe I don't want that. You don't necessarily want that on every project. You just deselect it. Okay, so now let's, we talked about this little selection. Let's open up this and see what this is. Okay, so I've got another window here. I can adjust my width and my length again in this window, but I can also mirror image. Um, with this, with a straight stitch, you can't really get the feel of what you can do with this window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to select another stitch so that you can see what that little window really does. Let me go ahead and select category number five and select um, something maybe that's one sided. Uh, let's see here. The hardest part is picking something, right? Okay, let's pick the little heart. So I'm going to select the little heart and this little window appears. Now you see I'm in a different color. I don't know if you all noticed when I was in my utility stitches, this was blue. It turns orange when I'm in my decorative stitching. So I'm going to open up the same little window. So watch this. If I mirror image it, it flips my hearts to the other side. So maybe you want that suddenly you'll be stitching a project and you think oh, i don't want to stitch it this way but the bulk of my project won't fit under my arm so you have the opportunity to flip it this when you select this one here um, what this will do it's not doing anything right now because i haven't stitched anything but say you've combined a stitch or you when you finish stitching this row of hearts, you didn't completely finish the heart. It, when, you, when you touch this and start stitching, say on the other side of your um, placemat, it'll start that pattern from the beginning of the stitching. It's not gonna start with doing the other half of the heart, so to speak. So it brings it back to the beginning of your decorative stitching so it starts properly. Okay, so this one is the little stars. It comes up selected as three continuous stars. If I was to touch a single star, it's gonna do one pattern, so to speak. If I select that, it does it continuously. So that that's kind of nice too. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, and I'm gonna go back I'm going to go back here and show you how I can combine my decorative stitching. So maybe I want to put a little vine. So you see what I just did? It added one vine. So this machine, you can combine decorative stitching to create your own decorative stitching. And again, I have the option here to adjust my width or my length of my stitching my decorative stitching. And um, so super cool. I have the ability to save it to memory. If I create a stitch that I really like, I can do that. And I also can delete. If I don't like what I'm doing, I can delete it. And 
I can go back here to my main decorative screen. I want to show you one more thing here. This is where I have my writing. Now remember, this is not in embroidery, this is in sewing. So if I wanted to write my name, I could travel through to page two, P, travel back, A, travel back to the appropriate page, T, and now I could come here, you see how it just spelled my name once? If I come in here and I, I had left one star selected, if I touch that, it repeats it over and over. And I also, whenever you see L or S, you have the option of large or small. Here, I have the ability to stretch them apart so I can adjust my spacing. See how it's spacing them further and further apart? So again, very easy, very user-friendly, very fun machine to sew on. Now I'm going to show you how to thread the upper part of your machine. I have my cone of thread on my spool holder. I'm going to use my little mini king spool cap. I'm going to slide it in so that it's just and slide it into the center of your cone. And you can see how nicely that holds. Then take your thread. Make sure that your presser foot is in the up position whenever you're threading your machine. Take your thread and you go under the hook under this tongue here. There is a threading path um, guide on the top here. I'm going to come down. It's all numbered. This is number three. Number four is up here. Come around. Come back down. Here's number five. Number six is, be is the hook, the little hook on top of my needle. And I'm just going to slide it to the left. If you need a little bit of tension because your thread is slippery, just hold your thread on the top and then it'll, your thread will snap easier behind your little hook. And now I'm going to put it into my needle threader. So number six was here. You'll see number seven is here. And there's actually a threading guide to assist me. So I'm going to go into this little notch, take it up above the seven, and there's a thread cutter on the side on the end of my machine. So I'm going to cut my thread I'm going to put my presser foot down and then I'm going to use my threader and my machine is threaded. So if you have a lot of changes to, to make, um, if you're stitching an embroidery design that has 10 different color thread changes, you have a needle threader to assist you with fast and easy um, threading. Now I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin. I have my spool of thread on my spool holder. I've got my small spool cap on there because it's a small spool of thread. I have it threaded underneath here, underneath the hook and underneath the tongue. And you'll see that on the top of your machine, there is a thread path. And for winding your bobbin, you follow the broken stitching or broken line, so to speak, for your threading. And you'll see that at number two, it swings over. So I'm going to swing over here and I'm going to go underneath that little hook and then back and around underneath my tension guide here. Then I'm going to come straight down to my bobbin and I'm going to wind it around five times around. And then there's a little opening here that has a blade. You can actually anchor it in here and cut your thread. Once you've done that, you can snap your bobbin and you can, you can see that your start stop button has turned orange. So now you just press that and your bobbin is winding. Now I'm going to show you how to insert the bobbin. So first of all, you're going to just pull that little lever and it unhooks your bobbin case cover. And then I'm going to take my bobbin and you can see here that there's actually a little diagram of a bobbin with a thread coming off that way. That's the way you want to have your thread. So you're going to drop your bobbin in. You're going to bring it back this way and you're going to go up the hill, down the valley. And there's a little blade in here and that will cut 
your thread. Then just put your bobbin case cover and snap it in there and you're done. You do not need to bring up your bobbin thread to start sewing. Now I'm going to show you how to use your one step buttonhole foot. First of all, you're going to come over to your screen, your sewing screen, and you're going to select category four, which is, are your buttonholes. Next, I'm going to select buttonhole zero one. And as you can see, it comes up here right away and it tells me to use buttonhole foot A. I have my buttonhole foot here. And you can see this is the button that I'm going to make the buttonhole for. I've already got it in here. This actually, the back of the buttonhole foot moves up and down. So I can slide it and then put my buttonhole in there and clamp this down until it grips. Next, I'm going to take my buttonhole foot and I'm going to slide it underneath my presser foot and attach it to my machine. So the button goes to the back. You need to make sure that it clicks and it did. So next you are going to, there's a little lever to the left of your machine and you are going to slide it down. This is very important. It's like a little gray lever, slide it right down and make sure that it's behind the white little tongue that's here. So next I'm going to put my presser foot down on my fabric and I'm going to go ahead and press start. If you don't put that little gray, pull that little gray lever down, the machine won't know what length to make your buttonhole. So if your buttonhole is too long, that's what you've missed. Okay, so it finished already. I'm just gonna cut my thread. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and there's my buttonhole, perfect. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the button fitting foot M. This, this foot is used for attaching buttons to your garment. The first thing that you need to do is drop your feed dogs. On this particular machine, there's a little slide on the back of the machine that you're gonna slide and drop your feed dogs. If you are not sure where that is, refer to your manual. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to your screen and we're still in category four, which is your buttonhole category and you're going to select category 4-14. This will come up on your screen. It tells you what foot to use, foot M, and this is what it's going to stitch out. So next we're going to come over here. I have already attached the button fitting foot M to my machine and I have a button underneath it. You need to make sure that the width of your stitch clears this and that your needle doesn't hit. So when you place your button underneath your foot and put your presser foot down, you are manually going to come over and bring your needle down manually and make sure that you are clearing that space. And in this case, I already checked and I know that it's the perfect width. If it's not the perfect width and you see that your needle is going to hit your button, you can come back to your screen and you can adjust your width to make it either a little wider, the bite, or narrower. So make sure that you start out by doing it by hand. Okay, once you know that you have the right spacing and your button is held well under there, Bring your speed control down to slow. You want to do this slowly. Now, I have not got my foot control attached. I'm using my start stop button. So I'm going to go ahead and press start. And you see, I've deactivated my feed dog, so it's not moving. It stitched several stitches, stitched my button on, and then it locked and it stopped. Do not use your thread cutter for this, 
just lift your presser foot up, remove your garment from underneath and cut your thread manually. You can then pull your top thread through and knot it on the back. So there I have my button attached and my nice keyhole buttonhole on top. Now I'm gonna give you a quick demo on how to use your overcasting foot G to sew a seam and overcast it at the same time. And this stitch could actually work well with some of your knits if you do not have a serger. You need to make sure that with this foot that you select the right stitch to go with it because you could break a needle. So please refer to your manual for the stitches that are you can use with this. In this case, with the Baby Lock Verve, you can use stitch number 1-13, 1-14, and 1-15. When you decide what stitch you want to do, make sure that you test it slowly to make sure that your needle clears and everything is okay. So I have some fabric set up over here and I'm gonna act like I'm stitching a seam together. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start. And you can see here before I press start that I have the fabric butted up here to the little flange that's coming out here. So butt that up, put your presser foot down and then go ahead and press start. And so you can see actually with this stitch, which is stitch 1-14, that it's doing a straight stitch and overcasting at the same time. So it's actually a really nice stitch that's built in. But remember to test. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Cut my thread. Lift my presser foot. And you can see how nice that did. And if I was to open up my garment, beautiful. Now I'm gonna give you a quick demo on how to hem a garment using your R foot, which is your blind stitch foot, and also selecting the right stitch for this project. So here on your screen, I've got stitch 2-01. You can also use stitch 2-02. So now let's come over here. The magic on this technique, so to speak, is folding your fabric correctly. So I have it marked here for you. This is the inside of my garment and this is my hem. I folded my hem once and then twice. And then the trick is that now you have to refold this and we're going to actually stitch along the inside edge of your hem and that little zigzag is going to swing over and catch your garment. So you're going to place your garment underneath your foot and you can see here that there's a little like a flange. That little flange you're going to butt up to the folded edge of your garment, and that's gonna be your guide. So once you've got that butted up to the inside of your garment, put your presser foot down, and then I'm gonna just press start. And you can see that it's stitching, and it'll swing over and pick at my garment And let's see what we have. So that's the inside of my garment. That's my hem. And you can see how beautifully that came out. Now we're gonna talk about two very important elements of embroidery, hooping and stabilizing. So the world of stabilizers can be a little bit intimidating. So I like to simplify it a little bit by saying there's basically two types of stabilizer. There's cutaway and there's tearaway. And then there's added elements to that. So you could purchase a fusible tearaway or a sticky tearaway, but it's still a tearaway. So if you're a beginner, I would start out by starting with the basics, either a tearaway or a cutaway. If you're gonna embroider on a knit, 
you would select a cutaway. If you're going to embroider on most anything else, you're probably good with a cutaway. My personal favorite stabilizer is this one. It's called a no-show mesh. So this is the Baby Lock brand no-show mesh. It also comes as a fusible mesh. So sometimes when you embroider a design and it puckers, it's not the design. It's just that you have not stabilized your fabric enough to support the stitches. So if you're embroidering on a lighter weight fabric, I like to use fusible mesh and I fuse it to the back of my project. If I'm doing a, maybe embroidering a quilt block, I'll use some fusible mesh, fuse it on the back. Um, and then you still have to put stabilizer in your hoop. So I have my hoop here that I'm going to show you how to um, hoop your fabric. So I have a piece of fabric and I have a piece of the no-show mesh. And this again is a cutaway. How can you tell that it's a cutaway? Because if I try to tear it, it doesn't tear. So I'm going to loosen the screw on my hoop so that my inner hoop comes out. And normally if I'm working on a table, I like to move this down so that my screw hangs off the edge of my table so I have room to unscrew it. For this shot, I'm not gonna do that, but generally it's easier. Now, a word of warning, don't loosen this too much that it comes completely out because it's, it'll be hard for you to get it back in. So just loosen it enough for you to be able to hoop your project. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cutaway in there on top. I'm gonna cut, I need enough to cover my hoop and then I'm going to lay my fabric on there. Then I'm going to take my inner hoop and I like to carefully... Now you'll see in this case that, that my outer hoop has a little arrow here and my inner hoop also has a little arrow. So that's the top. So you're going to make sure that this is going in the right direction. Then I always like to First of all, press in the top of my hoop and then come down the side. Can you see there? I've pressed it in. And then I like to come down the side and there I snapped it in. Now you want to be very careful that when you're hooping that you don't force your top hoop in because you could um, either damage your project, maybe hoop burn it, or you could maybe crack your hoop. So just be careful. So once you've got your inner hoop in there and you have it, you, you need to have your fabric nice and taut. And believe me, it takes experience hooping. Don't think that the very first time that you hoop something, it's gonna be perfect. So patience and practice. Once you've got your fabric in there, you're gonna tighten your hoop. Again, you're gonna tighten it until you can't anymore, until it's nice and tight, but don't force it. I actually had loosened my screw quite a bit. Okay, so it's nice and tight, and I believe I'm ready for embroidery. Now, before I move on to sliding that into my machine, I just wanna talk about the other stabilizer. I told you there's cutaway and there's tearaway. So basically, again, the cutaway you cut away and you would use it mostly on your knits. But when you use one that is um, very lightweight, it's, um, it works well on other projects too. So I have to say that the no-show mesh is probably my number one favorite for embroidery. But I do also um, like the tearaway. Tearaway means that when you finished with your embroidery, you turn it over, you can very carefully tear it away so there's nothing left on the back. What's left is tear away underneath your stitches to support your embroidery design and to help it not pucker. So now I'm going to go ahead and hoop this in my machine. It's nice and taut and again it's going to take practice for you to get to this. I'm going to slide it into my machine and start embroidering. Now I'm gonna show you how to attach your hoop 
to your machine. First of all, very carefully slide it under the foot. If you need a little extra boost, you can lift your presser foot just a little bit more so it clears easily. And then bring it over to your embroidery arm. Position the little screws in the right place, the little knobs and then just snap it down. You'll, you'll hear that snap. When you want to detach it, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to press that little lever and it'll loosen up and then carefully just lift it up and then lift that and bring your hoop out of your machine. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video on the Baby Lock Burr sewing and embroidery machine. If you have any questions, please be sure to stop by our store or give us a call. We are here to help you. This machine is available in store or online at sewing.net. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.